No? Yes? Hey everyone! <laughs> Maybe! Clive at 5 here! My computer a little freeze. And it's it's actually pretty difficult doing <laughs> both video recording uh, whilst capturing on a capture card. My capture card is not that great either, and my computer is starting to show its age. But hey, we have 32 cubes, and that's an important thing. So we're going to go back here to this uh, waterfall hub. And we are going to check out all these secret doors and finish the game. How about that? Oh, this is part 6, by the way. I probably should have said that a little earlier. Uh, if you're just jumping in, I guess I'll... I'll well, nah, forget that. I was just going to give a recap of what all these places were, but... Whoa, that's weird. This is kind of a creepy place. With lots of doors. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to the top and work our way down. I sort of like to do things that way. Wow, there's a huge guy up there. What was this place for? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty terrible, but whatever. This is a mysterious looking place. Looks very prehistoric. Huh. I can't rotate in this room, and it looks like this is a black hole, but yeah. Just, just wanted to confirm. So there's nothing in here. Except for a broken room that doesn't rotate. I want to save all these sections for the same video, because this sort of explains the Fez world, I guess you could say. Once again, I can't rotate in here. But there's a cauldron, which is kind of clever, I guess. Or maybe prehistoric. Yeah, this definitely looks like the prehistoric Fez world. That's okay to call it that. <laughs> huh. An owl. And they're worshipping the owl, it looks like. Looks like they're bowing, right? These large head people. Huh. This is sort of like the Easter Island, I guess. <laughs> wow, there's a lot going on in here. So there's some sort of beast. They killed the beast and ate it. <laughs> Maybe that's what they did in the cauldron. Look at that guy's chef hat. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a chef hat. We don't really know, I guess. And a caterpillar there. So definitely, I think we can pretty conclusively say that this is the prehistoric Fez world. And interesting that it's, you know, pretty flat. Alright, interesting. Let's check out the next place here. This is the eight cube door. Huh. There's an owl on that lighted sign. Is 
this looks like it was a, a very modern looking place with all these neon signs. Let's check it out. It also looks like it's sort of inside a black hole in a way. Nothing else going on here. The way it flashes in with uh, the rest of the sky showing. Like it's a nice happy day. And that owl is just weird. I don't know what the meaning of that is. Uh-oh, my Xbox crashed. <laughs> well then. That's just ridiculous. <sighs> well, how are you guys doing? This will only take a second. I'm not going to stop recording. <laughs> Yeah, be sure to let me know uh, in the comments what you're liking, what you're not liking, if I'm annoying. What you like about the game. Let's talk about that, too. Alright, we're back here. Let's give this another shot. Look at that how it flashes with a nice happy blue sky. Okay, now this room is a little interesting. This is a classroom, clearly. A world map. Interesting. Oh, that looks like the hexahedron. Someone was learning about the hexahedron in here. <laughs> and then that pylon, and... Ha! Huh, now that is really interesting. We've been there. Remember that? In part two, I think it was? Maybe it was part three, I don't I, I guess I don't remember for sure, but... Uh, the observatory, the library, all that business where we learned what motions equal uh, what sort of a code. And here it's a, it looks like it's actually teaching you how to read this. So, I mean, we have all these individual components down here. You s tip it on its side, and then you smash them together, and that's how you print it on the, on the pylon. Huh, that's... That's interesting. Oh, and there happens to be a mystery in this room. So, just just out of curiosity, let's see if we can enter this. Let's see. Up, left, right trigger, jump, left trigger. Up, left, right trigger, jump, left trigger, right, jump, down. Up. Oh, it's a little bit tricky to enter this stuff. Right, jump, down. There we go. Hey, we got an anti-cube. Well, that was nice. A reward for learning how to enter these codes. So uh, this is sort of like a, a backup. If you didn't figure it out in the room with that giant thing that was telling you how to move and do whatever else, then uh, that's going to teach you how to do it. <laughs> I figured I could... I could share how to do it earlier because I figured it out before going in there, not saying like, oh, I'm so smart, I figured it out without the extra hint. There are a lot of places with extra hints in this game, so... Uh, is, oh... <laughs> I figured it wouldn't really hurt to share that one. Let's go in here. I wish I could read those letters. I still I mean I still can't read them just by looking at them. And there is a way to read them, and we'll have to learn that. To figure out the game 209.4%. It's <laughs> such an odd place to end.
spoiler. All right. Well, nothing in there. Looks like we found everything in this town as well. All right. Next door. 16 cube door. Let's find out what's going on in here. What? Other people? There are other people in this world. Hello, other people. What... What are you saying? <laughs> it's all in that weird character code. Huh. Look at their bandanas. If you can see them. Oh, you can see them better in a different room. We'll check that out. Look at the kitty. I want to chase the cat. Woohoo! Oh, this place is in 3D. Could it be that these people perceive the world in 3D naturally? Hmm. Man, there are all sorts of people in here. And all of them are speaking that funny language. Yeah, check out their bandanas here. It's a funny symbol on them. What's going on over here? Looks like a barcode. Whoa! Barcode under construction. Huh. These people definitely perceive something that Fez does not. Now I can get in there, but I don't want to go in there yet. Just wait. Relax, relax. <laughs> what the? Hear the owls. See their effigy. Assemble the parliament. I'm sorry, this thing is just creepy. <laughs> but there are candles in here. It's... I mean, it's clearly a uh, some sort of a room for contemplation or something. I remember in that prehistoric town where they were worshiping that owl. I wonder if that has something to do with it. I hope these people don't mind that I'm just, you know, checking out all their rooms. Now this is an extremely important room. Cuz here it's all these symbols here. It's got we got to be able to figure out something in here. And indeed we are able to figure figure out something. Check out this wall. A dot with an empty square above it, a line with a another symbol in it, a square with another symbol above it and well, this looks like it could maybe be, you know, the extrapolation of a square into three dimensions. So we have zero dimensions, one dimension, two dimensions, three dimensions. And that's where your brain sort of starts getting kicked off in terms of what these symbols mean here. So an empty square, zero, one, two, Three. Huh, okay, so up is one, two to the right, three up and to the right. And you can look at that for a while and sort of start figuring things out, but then 
huh, there's another thing over here. So we had three on this poster right here. And we see that same three symbol up there. And it actually, it took me a while to figure this out, but looking at it, it's not just a, you know, a long, a tall set of symbols. I mean, it's a, you read it up and down, and that's an equal sign there in the middle. <laughs> so three equals the symbol with the, the downward hash. Downward hash equals downward hash as well. So that's interesting. And then we see this. And this is, well, that's something different as well. It's a, it looks like it's a set of equations. So from here, we, I mean, we kind of figured out that upward hash is 1, right hash is 2, and up into the right equals 3, and 3 can also be downward hash. So we start to sort of figure out that, hey, you can add these things by just layering the numbers on top of each other. So if up is 1, right is 2, down is 3, left must be something else and well it's not too tough to figure out that that's actually 4 now if you want to actually get algebraic and try to figure out you know 1 plus 2 plus x equals y and then take a look at this middle one you got 2 plus 3 plus you know something else equals the same thing you can i mean you can try to figure it out that way but you pretty much figure out that uh, by layering numbers on top of each other you get additive qualities and if up is 1, right is 2, down is 3, left is probably 4. <laughs> and so when you do the math here you see that oh layering all these on top of each other you get 10 and that's what this big plus symbol is. So you, you pretty much figure out how to count in the Fez world, and this one's a little bit interesting. Just take the the third symbol down here. It's the up and the left hash. So if we take 1, just the up hash is 1, and the left hash is 4, that equals 5. And then you have the third cube, which is up hash and left hash, which is another 5. 5 plus 5 equals 10. Huh, that's interesting. Okay, well then here, hash to the right, hash downward. So that's 2 plus 3, and then plus 5, again, is 10. Okay, that's neat. Up hash, right hash, yeah, we already talked about that one. So this third symbol is, let's see, 3 plus 4 would be 7. And then the second symbol from the top is a 2, which is 9, and the top upward one is a 1, which is 10. So there you go. Now you know how to count. And here we have, actually, a, a layout of a cube. That's, that actually looks kind of familiar. Where have we seen that before? Oh, one. That's a, f what was that, a four? And that's a six. And that's a five. And there we got a zero. And there we got a ten. A zero, a ten. Huh, that's all the symbols we have here. That's really interesting. So we we found whatever little device they use to count. That was the hint that we got from Dot when we first uh, found that counting cube. So that's a interesting little thing, and now I think it's pretty safe to say we know how to count in this game. And that's going to help us figure out some other puzzles. Uh, not only the bell, which had symbols like that on it, but also... Um, the treasure maps. Some of the treasure maps have these symbols on it. Okay, let's figure out what's going on in here, if we can. <laughs> oh, once again we see sort of this floating square symbol. They were wearing that on their bandana. It looks like there's a king of something. I'm not quite sure. It looks like one of them might be wearing a fez, even. Huh. And some interesting looking squid people. Alright, well, that's interestingly enough, I guess. And another key. We could probably use that, I suppose. 
I actually don't really know how to interpret that room, but I don't know. We'll figure it out. Oh, there's a door down there that I missed. <laughs> I don't know if it's important or not. Whoa. Huh. A big chair. Again, with that, uh, those floating squares. Oh, and there's something behind there, too. Another set of symbols. Right trigger, left trigger, right trigger, left trigger, right trigger, left, right, right. Well, that doesn't do anything, but hey, the room is gold, so let's not spend time there. I think those are a replacement. If you don't have a QR reader, you can enter the codes, those codes in this room or something. I don't know. Alright, so we checked out that room. We che Oh. Ugh, this... Are you kidding me here? This part of the world, it's so easy to get trapped behind the building that uh, it's kind of annoying, but whatever. Case in point. Anyway, hey, wow, they're constructing something up here. Looks like they're making a warp gate. They can do that? Huh. I wish I knew what they were saying. These guys certainly have some sort of a power... intuition. Some sort of vision that Fez doesn't have on his own. Alright, well, let's take a look in here. What is the... This looks like that thing that exploded. Amazing. A working Stargate. So that's what that was, a Stargate. Huh. Well, it looks like maybe we should uh we should go in here. Naturally there's an owl at the top of this. Huh. We need to think more about owls, it seems. They appear to be something special in this world. This is low gravity zone right here. It's a little bit awkward. It's very difficult actually to uh, control where you're going. And I, I mean, you had to get momentum too, which is really weird. Wow, this is really loud. Sorry, everyone. I'll try to speak up a little bit.
this thing. There's something in it. It's a door. Hmm. All right, I'm going to shut up and let you watch. <laughs> I know I said I'd, I was going to shut up, but I can actually play this right now. Something weird is going to start... Oh, has started happening. What is going on? Um, it's getting weird. Help!
Oh, yes. I think that means you beat the game. I'm not quite quite sure why, but... <laughs> Alright, here are the credits. I'm just going to let the credits roll this time, because, well, you know, just going to let them roll. Alright everyone, well, that is going to be the end of whatever part this was. <laughs> I think we're in part 6. Uh, but now I just want to point out that we have the option to do Start New Game Plus. Actually, maybe I should start the next part with that. <laughs> Alright, well, well, we'll do that. Thanks for watching, everyone.